Yes, until he goes berserk. Punching houses. Take that, house. <laughs> Wound! Uh-oh. The Battle for Trust, Episode 8. Already? Damn. Yeah, Aaron's still going nuts, punching houses. What do you do if you're Mikasa now, in this situation? Whoa, she's getting right up close. We got ourselves a Beauty and the Beast situation. I mean, this seems so crazy, but like, what else could you do? I mean, there's no point if Eren can't carry this boulder to the hole. I'm having flashbacks to Aang in the Avatar state right now. So far, it would seem that way. Is that the failure rocket? Let her do her thing. Oh, he just punched himself right in the face. Why are you hitting yourself, bro? Maybe he knocked some sense into himself. Maybe this will wake him up. Aaron loves bashing titans. That doesn't really make any sense. I mean, you're all in at this point. <laughs> this was partly Armin's idea, too. They're on the verge, it seems. This is so amazingly complex. Like, I feel for everybody involved in this, it's totally unknown what's going to happen to Eren. I mean, for me, I, I feel like he's going to come to his senses. But for them, you know, they have no good options. It's either they, they go all in and risk dying for nothing, or they back out and, like, they're doomed anyway. But one thing I really admire about that scene, and what I think makes Pixis a great leader, is that he seems to be unswayed by other people's opinions. And also, something that I really admire, he places his trust in, in the people he's chosen, right? Like, he's trusting the elite squad. That, to me, is good leadership. Like, trusting the people that are under you, if you know them well enough, to do the right thing. Instead of panicking, instead of micromanaging, instead of being swayed by the fear of other people around you, that, I think, is what sets him apart. That's probably why he's the, you know, the head of the southern garrison or whatever. He's reached this state of coolness, again, maybe partially fueled by alcohol, that I think few people can touch. Again, compare him to Wellman, who I think would have a meltdown if the wind blew in the wrong direction. Pixis is the opposite of him. Right or wrong about this, at least he has a vision, and at least he has conviction in that vision. Speaking of leadership. He really is your only chance at this point, I think. He really knocked himself out. <laughs> what makes it easier to side with Pixis and Ian on this is Pixis' speech basically about how they're basically doomed one way or the other. This seems like the only way where they're not doomed. And Ian makes really good points about Eren's potential. Like, this is his first time. <laughs> I don't want to say cut him some slack, because this is sort of a big deal, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot to ask of him. Jean, John? Connie, man, he's bold. I love Connie, he's growing on me a lot. Hmm. Seems like there's some kind of growing bond between him and Mikasa. 
<笑>おお。作戦には従うよ。必死に上がいて人間様の恐ろしさを思い知らせてやる。あ、かま。例には及ばない。お前が何をやり出すか分かったもんじゃないから気も冷やした。The <笑> He's fishing to see if she's single. <laughs> that was a test, and Mikasa gave him the answer he wanted. He's the guy that pointed Mikasa out to Wellman, right? I could be wrong about that, but I feel like he's had his eye on Mikasa since the beginning, since she first showed up into their squad and impressed him. I really enjoyed that scene, and I think that this is sort of what I've been looking for. Like, my hope early on was that this would be the, the bright spot out of things, would be heroism and camaraderie and things like that. I think it makes it special that it's framed in this world of absolute devastation and tragedy to have these few bright spots that are, that are hope for others and how that trickles out to them. Really, sometimes it feels like it's a small minority of people holding everything together which is an incredible burden but it's something that i enjoy watching you know i enjoy watching that kind of heroism like the, the speech that ian made and the speech that pixis made i think the show really needs that like it needs that in light of all the the horrible tragedies that happen and the devastation and the carnage that's sort of the test and i think one of the questions raised when things are at their darkest who who do you show up as you know and you see people that are showing up Aaron hasn't had a whole lot of time to rest maybe that's it Seems like Armin's not really doubting himself as much anymore. He's just springing into action. You awake? You knocked yourself out. The day where you move that boulder. Taking a nap. Mikasa's racking up this huge titan kill count. She has more kills than everyone else combined. Racking him up. What are you doing? Doesn't that risk killing him? I guess he doesn't have that kind of link. Yeah, this is a huge gamble. Armin really internalized that inner message he got about, like, doing his best and not letting people down. He seems different. This is the right thing to say to Eren. Get him angry. He's in this weird state, I don't really understand it. There's something, like, really warm and familiar about being in a Titan or something. This is so different from how he usually is. There we go, someone else doing something. Ooh. Connie, watch out. <laughs> Come on, Connie. Thank you, Jean, John. Oh yeah. Look at how much he's changed. Armin is not giving up. And lots of salt. <laughs> there we go. Damn it. Well, it was too much to ask for that whole thing to happen in one episode, I guess. That was one of my favorite episodes, I think, so far. It's just so much fun. There's so much happening. I like how the supporting cast is taking shape and how we have a bunch of people to root for. One of my favorite parts of the episode is Mikasa's unit and Ian, I think is his name. And the girl, is her name Rico? They have an interesting dynamic. And Pixis, of course. Like, there's just so much difficulty about this situation, which makes it really interesting. Then you have some of the graduating class that we know and like, like Jean John, who I'm now worried for, and Connie. Uh, you have Armin, who's like really learned some of the lessons, I guess, from previous episodes. He seems like he's showing up now. He's not just withering under pressure. He's gotten rid of the shaky hands. No more shaky hand syndrome for now. I have a sense that there's something really important about what Eren was experiencing while he was sort of in that coma, that Titan coma, but I don't really know what to make of it. It seemed like it was familiar to him and he wanted to go further into that, but it could just mean nothing. It could just be that he knocked himself out and was in a daze. I mean, he did knock himself out, but yeah, I gotta watch the next episode now. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. But I'll see you next time for episode 12.